Hey everyone, so while I was making a video on how to replace the rear drum seal on my dryer, I got everything taken apart and I figured I'd make a separate video just showing how the dryer works, what each part is on the inside of it. Um, and bear in mind, I'm kind of learning as I go here, so I'm going to show my observations and how I think this works. If uh, anyone out there is more of an expert, please put in a comment and correct anything if I say it's incorrect. So here's what I see when I take out the drum and I can see the internals of the dryer. All right, here is the dryer internals. I'm gonna start with the motor because that's what kind of drives the whole thing here, the drum and the blower. So here's your motor, it's just copper windings in here. Um, and on this shaft sticking out on this side, your belt is attached there and that's what spins the drum. It's just this small little belt here. Um, that's enough to turn the drum. And you have an idler puller here with a spring on it to keep, keep tension. So that's how that works. And then the other shaft of this motor sticks out here to the blower. So this is where all the draft um, comes from. It's this blower moving, drawing air through the dryer and on the exterior side, forcing it out. So the tube going out there is the exhaust and this here is the intake. So on this side, um, you actually have this housing that sits kind of right here and your lint trap actually drops right in there and this is right where the door would be. So that's where your air is coming into the blower from. But if you take it back a step further, it's actually air is coming through this grate here into your drum as the closed tumble. And even further upstream is coming in here, which is your heater. So you can see here, there's an opening with, uh, the belt's not supposed to be there, but um, you have an opening with a little protector here. This is where the air comes into the system. So it's grabbing air from the ambient parts around the dryer and putting it through here. And then these um, electrical connectors here are for your heating elements. And if you look inside there, you'll see copper windings or some sort of, I don't know if they're copper, probably not. No, just have secure places. But they're windings and that's the, that's the heating element. And I think maybe a couple of these could be um, sensors as well for like a high temp cutout, that kind of thing. But these thicker wires are definitely um, meant to be for heating elements. So from what I can see, there's got three sets of those wires. So there's probably three elements in there. And then there's some ancillary wiring, which is probably for the controls. So that's how that works. It pulls through there. Um, so what, so air is interesting is actually being drawn through your clothes, not being forced into the clothes. So, um, that's how that works. There's some sensors here, which I'm going to guess are the, maybe the airflow sensors. Um, there's also temp sensors here and there as well to make sure it doesn't get too hot in there. Um, and one of the problems I had was with airflow. So somewhere along this ductwork, there's an airflow sensor that can tell you if you've got a blockage somewhere and you're not getting the airflow you need. Other thing to point out is the support rollers back here on this wall. This dryer has two of them. Um, and then on the front part, closer to the door, if I pull apart, there's actually three here. One, two, and three. So that's how um, this dryer works. This is a Whirlpool Cabrio dryer. Um, I think a lot of dryers probably have similar style of operation, but if you're troubleshooting, it's probably you know good to know how it works so you can diagnose the problem. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, again, if I said anything wrong, please comment in and correct me. Thank you.